All right, so this video is going to be all about um, the basically the inverse square nature of gravity. We know that gravity has this equation, g m1 m2 divided by r squared, and the question is kind of why do we have this squared value in here? Well, it really does depend on the geometry of the situation. So let's uh, think about this. If we have a, uh, a sphere, like say look a little ball, okay? It is three-dimensional, all right? Then it has a surface area of is 4 pi r squared. That is the surface area of this particular sphere, okay? Now, why do we care about surface area? Well, if we're talking about, let's say, a... Um, a candle. That is supposed to be a flame. That's not going to be a very good flame. There we go. We have a candle and it's emitting light out in all directions. Okay. Well, the light at it's not just two dimensional like it is on the screen. It's actually coming out at you. It's going into the screen and all the light goes out basically in this sphere of, of um, influence, the sphere around the candle. And all the light that is emitting uh, during one second or, or one small portion of time, the intensity of the light is basically all that light in this one particular sphere, okay? But as that light progresses outward, that sphere gets bigger. So if I were to draw a small sphere and then say sometime later we have all that light has now gone a certain distance away and now it's a much bigger sphere around where it started then we're really not talking about the a different amount of light it's still the same light it's just now it has gone from being uh, this far apart to being this far apart so we have a, a difference here, and the difference here is is really uh, a matter of looking at the surface here, looking at 4 pi r squared, okay? Mm -hmm. 4 pi is a constant, obviously, so it has to do with this r. So from the small version, you have a small r, which when you square it, it has a value, and then here you have a much bigger r, okay? And there's capital R. So the what we would say the intensity, the amount of light in a very in each unit of area has gone down by a factor of r squared due to this surface area. So that means if we're really talking about uh, the brightness of something, the brightness of something here is our uh, let's see here's our candle again, okay, and that candle let's say starting from the center emits some light. And there is an area right there that has some amount of brightness to it. Okay, you let the light go out a little bit further, you let it go out uh, twice the distance. Now we have a different amount of area. And if you really look at it, let's see if I get it, can draw correctly, this is really for of the original areas that we had back here. So this is at r, this is at 2r. You have area here, you have four times the area here. And if you let it go out even further, what you would see at 3r is you would have 16. Okay, way out here, you would have 16 times the, no, excuse me, you would not have 16, you would have 9, 9 times the area. So it goes as the square of the distance away from us, and that has to do with the intensity. What does this have to do with gravity? Well, it turns out that gravity does the exact same thing. If we talk about, and uh, here's our Earth, I'll draw that a little bit better, here's our Earth, and its influence of gravity goes out in all directions, even out towards you and into the screen, it goes out in all directions in this kind of spherical geometry, just like what light does. So that means that if you're going out, let's say, here's radius r from the center, and if you go out a, another radius r, then the gravitational strength, the force of gravity, 
is let's say I'm gonna do this in a different color let's say that you have a force of gravity here and you go out twice the distance then you're gonna have one-fourth the force of gravity here now why did it go down why didn't it go up because we're talking about gravity as you get further and further and further away we know that gravity gets smaller and smaller and smaller and you can think about it it's just like this it's for any given point you're looking at everything getting spread out further and further and further so all this light is getting dimmer and dimmer and dimmer the further you get away and for gravity it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller so let's say we go out another distance of r okay here's another distance of r we have another let me do that in a different color we have another distance r out now we have this new sphere Okay, new sphere going around, and that is kind of poorly drawn, but you can get the idea. Now we're basically three times the original radius out, so it's been spread out so much that we are now one-ninth the original force of gravity. So this is how the inverse square came about. This is why when we take a look all the way back at the original equation, all the way back here, the reason why it is squared because it has to do with the geometry the geometry of the sphere that goes around the the planet around the mass that is exerting gravity outward okay so the r squared has to do that so what does that mean that means that let's say you are sitting here on planet earth there you go there's you in a very poorly drawn way you have the force of gravity on you and let's say it is 400 newtons okay because you're kind of tiny but you are currently one Earth radius out. So if you go out another Earth radius, say you're going to go out into outer space, about 6,000 kilometers up, then how much would you weigh? Well, would you weigh half as much because you're now twice the distance away? Well, no, because you would have to factor in the fact that gravity is much less out there, and it's much less due to the squared value here. So you're now not half as much, you are one-fourth as much. So you are now 100 newtons. Okay, if you go out one more radii, now you're three times out, now you're going to be one-ninth as much. And I have to pull out my calculator and say, what is 400 divided by 9? Now you're going to be 44.4 newtons. Okay, so it goes down like this. So if you actually plot it out on a graph, of let's say the intensity or the force of gravity let's do the force of gravity okay the force of gravity as a function of distance then what you would say is actually an inverse square relation it comes down relatively quickly and comes out so if you have here's r you're going to be right here okay here is 2r you are now one quarter as much. Here's three R, you are now one ninth as much. Okay. And you know it's a graph, it's poorly drawn. But uh, you have to, to understand that big G M1, M2 over R squared has to do with inverse squares. So if you double the distance, you do not half the gravity, you are quartering the gravity. You have to square that change. Okay. I'll uh, post some questions underneath this video and let you take a crack at it.